Hey everybody, before we jump into the actual video of me making this boat, which is next to this amazing paint job that my friend did on this Kraken from a bone set a few years ago, I just want to say I'm going to comment during the video about the instructions and the quality and the size and a whole bunch of things. Those aren't judgments, that's just comments. I realize whatever they did in 1986, they didn't have the cool computers that we have now, and it had to fit inside of a Dragon magazine. They couldn't make really big pieces of cardstock. Any comments I make about the instructions or the size or anything else aren't criticisms. They're just observations about where we were in 1986 compared to where we are now. Hope you enjoy. We all have garbage, and we like to play games. How do you use garbage in your games? Woo! That's a wrap, folks. That's a wrap. Hello, good people of the internet. I'm Mike. Normally, I host a series of YouTube videos about using garbage in your games, but I found something when I was digging through all my old Dungeons & Dragons stuff. It is from December 1986. Dragon number 51. How to build the high seas in 3D. This was an insert. The instructions are a little iffy. I don't... Given some of the comments in the instructions, I'm not sure that they had done a lot of paper craft before. 1986. Wow. Somehow I haven't put this together until now. I'm not really sure how that's possible. So that's part of it. Here's a little bit more. I've cut one piece out so far. And the last piece. The instructions are all of two pages with a few pictures. I searched the interwebs. Cannot find a finished version of this anywhere, which is amazing to me. I'm not going to film the entire process of me building this ship. They didn't even know what kind of ship it was. There are pretty good step-by-step -step instructions. I've built much more complicated paper craft models before, so I think I can do it. One of its suggestions, photocopy this, kind of test put it together. Interestingly, I actually have the Dragon Magazine CDs. So I could print it off of there because I have the original PDFs. Like I said, however, I have put something more complicated than this together before. You can see I did some black edging here. Whenever you work with paper craft, you really want to edge any edge with black permanent marker. Permanent marker. It'll look like a shadow. Anything is better than seeing these white edges. And I've got some other things that I can show in another video about that. So, I'm going to cut these pieces out, I'm going to put them together as I go. I'll record a little bit of video at different stages. Uh, this is kind of exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is going to look like. Just another tip when cutting out something like this. It's tempting to cut out the whole big piece and then cut out these little nooks here. It's actually much better. Metal straight edge. It's actually much better if you cut the little pieces first. All kind of going in one direction. Etc. So I cut out all these little things and then cut here. That way the whole piece stays stable, attached to everything else. One really good piece of advice that the magazine gives is to only cut out the pieces that you're working on. Don't cut out all the pieces at once. It feels awesome to get everything cut out, but you're going to get the pieces confused. So these are the first four pieces that are going to form the hull. I used the straight edge with zero pressure on the tabs to score them so that they're much easier to fold. I did black edging every place right here, for example, where it's going to be glued together. 
it's really a good idea to do all of the edging before you put it together. It's much, much easier that way. Also note that I have put down a piece of corrugated cardboard because I'm going to be doing the gluing step and I really like my Calibri cutting mat. came shipped totally flat, didn't have any of the awful VOC or other orders. I'm going to use some stick glue and see if that's strong enough and I guess we'll see what happens. Interestingly, when I put it together, the it bowed like a boat. It's not flat. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to be. When I get the back boat, part of the boat on, maybe it won't be as curved as much. Also, I had used some tacky glue on the front because the stick glue wasn't holding the front piece together. Those really want to pull apart. Looks like it's trying to pull apart a little bit right now. We'll see how it goes. This is the rudder. I'm just going to read you the awesome instructions. The rudder is easily assembled. That, those are the instructions for how to assemble this. Now, I agree, if you've put stuff together before, it's pretty easy to assemble. Another thing I noticed is they didn't print on two sides, so we're going to have white here. That's okay. I'm going to build it as it was originally given to us in 1986, and then I'll make some adjustments to it afterwards. I'll be applying a piece of foam core to the bottom to get it flatter. I could paint it, I could just kind of color it in brown or black, but I think I want the art to be the same as this. It's a little wobbly. This part's going to go right here. A little bit of brain power to figure out exactly what to do. I think that the picture might have had a mis the instructions might have had a small mistake. I'm going to try to bring the ends in a little bit here, but this rear part is going to sit back here. There's a similar part that sits on the front. There are instructions about adding crew quarters to the crew deck or level. This isn't called that and the main level isn't called that. I'm going to assume that they go in here, but it's, again, I think there might be a small mistake in the instructions. I'll reread them and I'll let you know. But tonight I'm going to put the rudder together. The rudder gets glued on the back here. I'm going to put this part together. This goes on the front and I'm going to attach the back here. Hopefully, at the end of the day, we'll have something on the back, something on the front, and the rudder right here. Since this is sort of a tutorial also, A, I realized after I filmed that last section that I already did the four castle. I think it's four castle. Anyway, when you're scoring, what you do to make sure you can fold things, use a straight edge. Just no pressure, zero pressure. Just run it right on the line where you, where you have to do a fold. You want to do it on the outside of the fold. You get a much cleaner fold that way. Use your black Sharpie or whatever kind of pen you're using. Color this edge right here to make sure that you don't see this white corner, you see a black corner. So you can see how it went on. Actually, I think the back looks really nice. You can see a little bit of white here. I'll probably edge that. It would have been way easier had I done something on the bottom here before I glued it on, but like I said, I want to see what it's supposed to look like. This piece, the forecastle, did not go on very well. Since the bottom isn't level, and I pushed it on when it was flat, it kind of twisted. It'll be fine. It's just not quite as straight as it would like to be. But this is... The bottom of the boat pretty much put together. The next step is to build the superstructure and the main deck. Another interesting part of the instructions, if you've cut this hole before you start putting things together, it will be a lot easier. It doesn't actually say, hey, cut this hole before you start putting things together, which is, I don't know, kind of weird. 
Also, it's got to be glued on the back here. There are no lines on the back. Definitely some things about this that are harder than a more modern when I put together a massive ship, significantly larger, more complicated, but I never felt like I didn't quite know how things went together. Uh, wish me luck. So yeah, so we are on step six. Note the notch in 13, that's this little piece right here, is cut so that this which is the mast stand and the mast can go through the hole. Now, if this goes through the hole, we're gonna see white, which, you know, whatever, we're seeing some white in some spots, but why would you do that? It says that this should go through the hole. So then I thought, okay, let's build the mast and stick this, doesn't fit there, but if we go this way it fits, but this is not the way the picture shows it going. So, I don't know. The instructions again are not particularly clear. This is supposed to go through a hole or something. I think what I'm going to end up doing is gluing this piece here slightly up from here, down from there I guess, leaving a gap so that just a little bit of the mass can go through and have something to sit on. I think that's the right thing to do. Also, while this is great, because it looks like a mast should look, right? The crow's nest should be through. It makes it completely useless to hold a miniature, which is unfortunate, because it is, it is big enough to hold a miniature. If it had been built like this, you could have done that. On the other hand, it, that kind of looks goofy, so I get why it's like this. The other thing, that it said to do was to to glue this piece on to here but then that makes this not really usable for adventuring so I'm just gonna build it so that it goes on there like that but if somebody goes through this door a character a player or whatever goes through the door we can take that off and we can be playing pretty much on all one two three four five surfaces at once. We're pretty close to done. We're going to finish it here shortly so that this goes in here. There are stairs that go from here to here, which is kind of cool. And then we may or may not make this taller so that it fits more like what I assume it should be, which is this at this level, but you can see it's almost an inch below, half inch below, which is not what we're looking for. So we'll be making some adjustments when it's done, but we're pretty close to done now that I've decided what to do with this piece here. And here you have it, the finished product in terms of building it as it was meant to be built in 1986 with the white and curve and a few other things. I think I mentioned this in an earlier part of the video, but I built this mast so that just a little bit goes in and it sits on a mast stand. It actually works pretty well. I think I also mentioned, but I can't remember, that I didn't want to glue that on because I wanted to be able to use this space. But here you go. This is the finished product. The back, I think, looks especially nice. Like I said, if we're going to use this as a battle, we'll probably do something like this. Anything on here is in the air or on the water. What's interesting about this model is that they didn't really make any attempt for the height to be correct on any of the pieces. Certainly not down here. Certainly not the size of the doors. This is the pilot house, where the pilot would be steering the ship according to the instructions that he or she is receiving. Obviously that's not big enough to fit inside. Hope you enjoyed part one of this video, and that is building it like it was meant to be built in 1986. If you liked it, please like the video on YouTube, subscribe to the channel if you'd like, 